Welcome back. Right, here's a pair of digital veneers, or verniers. Some crappy O-rings that came with this piston. And the crappy barrel as normal. Alright, so I've gone out and bought some telescopic gauge sets. This is what uh, the service book recommends, it's something like this. Okay. Uh, I actually find these rather inaccurate for my own personal liking. But uh, I'm going to go by with what the manual states. Uh, like I said, I want to try and blueprint this. To try and blueprint, you've got to be back to manufacturing specifications. Uh, I'm going to do what I can to get back as close to the service manual where possible. But we have to try and find out, figure out exactly what's what. Now, we, well, not many of you know, but this is, the diameter of this should be approximately 54 millimeters. Okay, this is the set that I was given from online, cost me about £10 at the most, cheap set. I will take the 54mm as I've stated because that's what it should be, between 32 and 54mm, okay, that's the set I'm going to be using. Right, please note, unscrew. Screw in. Just a light twist, and you can see that, 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 that this does compress, but it won't hold. Tighten it up a little bit more, and it will compress, but not a great deal. Okay, you can hold it at certain points, but you have to tighten it off to make sure it doesn't give you too much trouble. Alright, okay, what we're going to do is roughly 15 millimeters from the top. All right, just to make sure we get a good, good seat. Okay. Right. There we go. I've tightened this up as much as possible at the top. Let's turn this on. Okay, that's zero. Alright, let's see what we can measure up on this here, shall we? What's the inner diameter of this? So, 5395, that's what we got as the top. Alright, let's try the forward and back motion. see what we get front and back front and back front and back gives me 53.95 there we go the way I would expect it to be uh, that's only in from the top ideally I should be doing it from the bottom as well, or mainly from the bottom. So, let's see what we get. Okay. Three point nine one. Okay. 
Well, I've got over 54 mil there. I can't measure that part. There's just nothing to measure at all. It's just too much. Too much gap. But there, now I'm getting resistance. But here, oh, hang on. Oh, it's giving me something. Not a great deal though. Side side movement. Slightly ovaled, ever so slightly, not a great deal. Alright, so the bottom is out at an oval, but the top is consistent. So, I mean, at the top of the strike, peak, uh, peak time, we do have compression even though it's going to be detrimental because what we have is going to be a cut there and a cut there and that would be the exact same thing for there we have a cut there and we have a cut further down there but on the top strike that's where the compression was but not on the downstroke. Um, too much side to side movement. To be quite honest, I think whoever put this back together really didn't want to take too much pride in it just to slap it together or cobble it all together to sell it on and get it done with and get rid of the bike because they just could not be bothered to service it pro properly ever since they've had it. <laughs> Now, let's see how much of the piston is any of this is good. Let's say it's a 0.97. Alright, let's have a look. 0.97, shall we? Wow. Not 0.97 as, as what it claims. Alright, let's try this. Nine five three nine eight five. Nine five, I'm going nine two nine three. At the top, it drops to 53.69. As far as I'm concerned, that looks to be completely wonkered. <laughs> wankered, personally speaking. Uh, not too sure who the manufacturer is. Let's have a look, see if we can get anything in there. Is there anything we can get in there? It's a shame, really. It's all carbonized on the inside, rather crappy. But yes, there we go. Uh, trying to think what else other people would uh, constitute as being poorly managed. Okay. I've just got to go back and get a cup of coffee, I'll be back soon.